My dear friends, welcome. I pray that each one of you is safe and healthy. Every day we're facing previously unheard of challenges all around us, but we are not disheartened because we trust in God, a God who remains faithful no matter what the circumstances. As we are accustomed to say, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. In the interests of safety and out of love for one another, we have separated. Social distancing, it's called. It's very painful. However, in this holy virtual space that we have created, we are together again around the table of the Lord. Here we will experience spiritual intimacy, healing, and oneness in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's as if all the limitations of the physical separation are removed and we are one in the Lord. So for the next 40 minutes or so, please revel in the presence of God, revel in the peace of Christ. Jesus said to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, so do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of God, our mercy, mercy, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you, you opposing your will in our lives, and we have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil that we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive and restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. 
Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesus, Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinaba and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse said, Made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mighty, mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. And you have anointed my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from a letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfaithful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and upon your lips that you may worthily proclaim the Holy Gospel. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Christ. Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sense. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but is someone like him? He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
dear friends, here we are in a most difficult time in all of our lives. I can't even remember a, a more, a time that's probably more difficult to understand. Even 9-11 doesn't live up to this. Main reason being is we don't understand fully what's going on. We don't know how long it's going to be a problem. We're on hold in many ways. And that's very, very frustrating. And so here we are, and we try to make some sense of it all, and that's part of human nature, to try and make sense of circumstances that are around us, to come up with some answers, to come up with some understanding with which we can live. And even that is becoming more difficult because of the separation. We're not, e we're not even able to congregate and be with our friends and that, with our family. There are a couple of texts that I want to look at today from the scriptures that may be of some help to us. And it concerns the whole topic of light and understanding. St. Paul in Ephesians says, Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. And Jesus himself says that he is the light in the Gospel reading. Uh, how, how can this help us? What sort of understanding can this give us in the light of everything that's going on? The main message today is one of healing. The Gospel is about healing the man born blind. And as much as anything, that's what we're asking. We're asking for some light. Some light to cope with and understand what's going on. You've heard the expression, well it's a toast actually, here's mud in your eye. And the origin of that toast is this reading from John's Gospel, where Jesus comes to the blind man and with his spittle makes mud and rubs that mud on the blind man's eye and tells him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he goes and washes, his blindness is cured. So when we say to a person, here's mud in your eye, we're wishing them something good. We're wishing them blessing. Mud in and of itself is not something that inspires confidence. Mud is something which, when put before our eyes, inhibits our ability to see and removes clarity. But here, in the case of Jesus, he uses mud to heal the blindness of this man. We are not seeing clearly at the moment. Our vision is being impeded. We lack understanding. We are hoping to deal with a pandemic affecting the whole world. My own family in Ireland is under the same restrictions that we are under here. We are all citizens of this world and we're affected by this pandemic. Coming to terms with it, I think invites us to look at an expression that we find in the reading from 1 Samuel, which is also a reading about clarity of vision. Samuel is being asked by God to choose one of Jesse's sons to be the king of Israel. 
And as Jesse lines up all of his sons before Samuel, Samuel looks at them all and they look wonderful. And he says, surely this one is going to be the next king. Surely this is the one. And after he goes through all of the sons, there's no one left. The Lord has told him, no, none of these are to be the king. And what the Lord says to Samuel is, the Lord does not see as mortals see. The Lord does not see as mortals see. And so David, the one who is out in the fields herding the sheep, the youngest of the family, the runt of the family, if you like, is the one that God has chosen because God does not see as mortals see. So what does the Lord see in the circumstances we are living in now? What does God see that we don't see? How can we begin to see through the eyes of God and interpret the, the events that are before us? It all comes, I believe, for us it comes down to being able to trust in God. To trust in God that despite everything that's happening, God is still the one that we go to. God is the one who we believe who is in control of all things. Jesus makes a strange statement at the end of the Gospel today. He says, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do not see may become blind. The ones who claim to see, the ones who claim to understand what's going on, need to take a step back need to take a step back and trust in God. Look at all the different interpretations of the events that are before us today. We want to blame. There is a desire to blame. Um, there's a desire to blame government because they're not responding properly. In some circle, in some circles, and we've seen some episodes that are not that are not good, that are not upbuilding, whereby people were blamed. But how can we deal with this with humility? How can we see with the eyes of God? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. We read that in the prophet Isaiah. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. If we can but can, if we can be open to the way that God is leading us, be open to see God at work, even in the most difficult of circumstances. And I think that is our best approach, to ask for light, to ask for understanding, to see in the midst of all this, God. To see God in it, in it strengthening us, in it comforting us, in it giving us the ability to get through this together, the ability to understand it together, and the ability to come out on the other side stronger, closer to God. So my wish for us all, as we suffer under these extreme circumstances, that we will be comforted, comforted by God, that we will not be panicked, but that we will know that God who is faithful is with us even in these dire circumstances and that there's nothing that is before us 
that we cannot deal with, that we cannot cope with because of the fact that the Lord Jesus walks through this with us. We are not alone. We are in God's hands. And because we are in God's hands, we are safe. And we thank you, Lord God. Now the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was with me man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart, with all our mind, let us pray to God, saying, hear our prayer. For those who are sick from the COVID virus and those who care for them, that they may be restored to health and receive all that they need this day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died as a result of the COVID infection, and those who mourn that they may know God's consolation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For nurses and doctors, and all who work in hospitals and medical care, that they might be sustained with energy for their work and protected from infection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public health experts, for scientists and bioengineers working to understand and find a treatment for the COVID virus, that you may grant them insight and success. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the World Health Organization, for the CDC, for government officials, that policy and practice may be wise and effective. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in quarantine, that their spirits may be sustained, and for those separated from those they love by the circumstances of this illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are afraid, that they may know the peace that comes from trusting God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all our churches working to provide vital pastoral care to our members under these difficult circumstances, and for the work of the Diocese of New Jersey and Diocese of Newark COVID Task Force, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Hong Kong, the Most Reverend Paul Wong, Archbishop of Hong Kong and Bishop of Hong Kong Island. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For our Bishop, William Stokes, and for all our clergy and people in the Diocese of Calendar of Prayer, we pray for the Reverend Douglas J. 
J. Renz. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. For President Trump, for Governor Murphy, for Mayor Tauarico, for the leaders of the nations and all who are in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Eatontown, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, in the St. James calendar of prayer, we pray for Carol Klein and Jared Keelan, for Katie and Dawn Coolidge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, no mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphaned, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Sandy Sambach, Randy Bates, Carol Sweeter, Catherine Corris, Lou Cook, Gary Holland, Mary Alice Combs, and any others you wish to pray for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers and dispose the way of your servants toward the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. My dear friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of, and of thine own that we have given, given thee. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is Christ right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who, rose, who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our lives, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes from the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You, are, you call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus Christ to be human, to share our life proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intended for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This, cup of, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts, that your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, Dying you destroyed our death. Rising, Rising you restored our life. life. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus has come, come in glory. glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed James, our patron, and all your people into the joy of our eternal home. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who we are many are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us now pray in thanksgiving. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of
God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.